What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. You know who it is. It's your boy, Nick. Big dogs gotta eat fantasy football. The NFL Combine just finished up, I think, last week. A few days ago. I wish I got this video out a little earlier, but we're here nonetheless. I'm doing a video breaking down the Combine and doing a recap of just the running backs. Now, I'm not gonna do one for all the positions because... You know, I did some research and I'm like, I don't want to waste my time doing one for quarterbacks, for wide receivers, tight ends. For instance, wide receivers over the previous three seasons. Amari Cooper is the only rookie wide receiver over the last three years to have an 800-yard receiving season. None of them have had eight touchdown seasons. They're not making a huge impact. Obviously, there will be ones that come along, but it, I, I don't feel like it was a, a, a good use of my time to get into every position. This was a wild stat that I put up on my Instagram post yesterday. If you're not following me, make sure you are. For quarterbacks, over the last 10 seasons, I went back 10 years, it actually might be 11, I think it went back to 2006. There have only been four quarterbacks that have finished as a fantasy QB1, so finished in the top 10 over the last 10 years, rookie quarterbacks. Dak in 2016, he was QB6. RG3 and Andrew Luck, both in 2012, were QB5, QB8, respectively. And Cam Newton did it back in 2011 during his rookie year. It's QB3. So over the last 10 years or 11 years, there's only been four rookie quarterbacks that have finished in the top 10. So it's very rare that we see really, really opportunistic rookie quarterbacks that, like, you know, you need to draft. So I don't feel like it's worth me doing a whole video on it. Anyways, um, oh, another takeaway from that is every one of these rookie quarterbacks had a minimum 255 rushing yards and five rushing scores during their rookie year. The average was 520 rushing yards and five or eight rushing scores, excuse me. So basically, if you're, if you're looking to draft a rookie quarterback, it needs to be someone with rushing upside. Otherwise, they're not gonna have enough arm, enough opportunity through the air in order to make a difference in the fantasy impact. That being said, oh, I forgot my belt. All this stuff, you know, this is from Fantasy Jocks. I figured I'd rep the tank. I don't really like dressing up douchey for my videos, but whatever. Um, this is the last video I'm going to make before the giveaway. So Fantasy Jocks sent me over their championship mini belt. Obviously, they have the big belt you can get. I think it's like 150 bucks on the site. You could throw in all of your league mates, throw in 10 or 15 bucks. You'll get this and you'll have this for life. You could pass around champion to champion. But they also have a mini belt. This is like 38 bucks. Still very good quality. I'm doing a giveaway. The giveaway is for this as well as a BDGE dad hat. All you got to do is go follow the new Instagram, BDGE underscore one word, fantasy football. BDGE underscore fantasy football. Go comment on uh, one of my recent posts and end it with a hashtag BDGE. It's all you got to do. Follow the Instagram and go comment on a post BDGE and I will pick one winner. I know a lot of you guys have already done that and signed up. So this is the last video within the next like week or so. I will be picking a winner and I'll put up the video on Instagram saying who won the belt as well as the dad hat. Let me put this in here for good background measure. And the last thing you got to do for yourself is head over to my website. You'll see it up here, bdgeat.com. When you get on the homepage, just scroll down, sign up for the newsletter. This is where I'm going to be giving you all updated information on whatever content's coming out. I'll send you a promo code for the store, which will be updated throughout the summer with new like team apparel. I told you guys I'm working on some of that, as well as updates on like my draft guide and other product offerings that I'm going to give to you guys. So there'll be a promo code in there, and I'm going to be giving you value throughout my emails that you know, that you won't be getting through Instagram or YouTube or the blog. This is stuff exclusive to the email. So make sure you're signed up for that. Do yourself a favor. I'm not going to spam you with like a bunch of bullshit like six times a week. So just sign up for the newsletter, scroll down on the homepage, enter your info, subscribe, and you gooch. Yeah, so sorry. That was the last plug. The only reason I threw that newsletter in there also is because this is in blog form. So there's a lot, there's like, there's videos and there's more written word in the blog form if you want to get a better idea of what I'm saying in the video so you can go check that out. Anyways, let's get cracking with this. So it's no secret by now, Saquon Barkley, if someone could win the combine, he won it. Being touted as, this is per Sean Payton, head coach of the Saints, as well as Peter King. He's the best running back prospect they've seen over the last 20 to 25 years. And that's coming from Sean Payton, who has a guy like Alvin Kamara on his team, who's played with Adrian Peterson, who, you know, has some experience with running backs. So that's saying a lot, in my opinion. Squam Barkley absolutely ripped through the combine, weighed in at 233 pounds, six feet tall, ran a 4-4-40. His spark score, his weight adjusted speed score, every athletic score put him in the 99th percentile. 
Uh, you hear a lot of stuff about him possibly being a number one pick. My opinion, as I also put this on Instagram the other day, I don't think the Browns go with Barkley at number one. I have a crazy stat. I guess I'll share it with you now, but it's also going to be next week's stat. I looked over the last 30 years. I went back the last 30 years and I looked at every running back picked in the top five. There was, I think, 19 running backs over the last 30 years picked in the top five of the NFL draft, not fantasy football, in the NFL draft. And they combined, all those 19 running backs combined to play, I think it was a 151 NFL seasons throughout all their careers. And of those 151 NFL seasons of the top, top five running back picks, there have been three Super Bowl wins out of 151 seasons. So, you know, when people say, like, Barkley is a beast, he's super athletic, he's amazing... Yes, but running backs don't win you championships. It, it makes sense, and you shouldn't be. The thing is, like, people are like, oh, take Barkley one, and then you have your choice of quarterback probably at four. Thing is, like, that only works if the Browns' front office doesn't value a certain quarterback more than the other ones, right? Like, they're not just like, oh, you know what? Fantasy football, it's all about value. Let's just take whoever drops to me here. It's like, no. If they love one of the quarterback prospects, they want that guy to be the guy. And, you know, if they take Barkley one, there's a good chance that the Giants take a quarterback at two or someone takes a quarterback before they get to their next pick at four. And if it's that guy, like they screwed up monumentally, right? Because there's also a chance Barkley drops them at four. So they're going to probably take their quarterback at one and look for something else at four. But Barkley ripped up the combine. He's projected to be a top five pick. Um, and again, there's videos on the blog if you want to go check those out of more of like his like, workout clips from the combine. Once the draft has come and gone, I'm going to make a video on uh, like my top five or top 10 running back, rookie running backs for fantasy football, right? Like once Barkley gets drafted by the Browns or whatever, and then everyone finds their place, I'm going to make a video based on, based on like who is the top ranking rookies at running back and things like that. So I'm just kind of giving you a recap of what we saw. Uh, we saw two Georgia running backs that are both very high productive, highly productive in college for Georgia. It was Nick Chubb and uh, Sony Michel. That's how you pronounce it, like the fucking girl in dodgeball. It's like Michel Stalovitsky. Sony Michel and Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb tested off the charts. You know, he dealt with that really severe lower leg injury in college. And I'm sure a lot of you saw the replay, the gruesome replay. But that was uh, interesting enough. Chubb and Michel came into Georgia together in 2014 freshman and stuck it out all four years together, 2014 to 2017. Both put up really, really productive numbers. Chubb scored very highly at the combine, weighed in at 227, 5'11", so really good size, ran a 4'5", 240, which is 88th percentile in weight adjusted speed score, uh, bench 29 reps, which is tied for Barkley with the most of the running backs, 38 and a half vertical, 10, eight broad, spark score, 98th percentile. So he has a great combo of strength, of speed, of size. He's very athletic. He has very good vision, very good balance. He's a very well-rounded running back prospect. He can catch the ball. Uh, he ran for about 2,500 yards over the last two college seasons, five and a half yards per carry, 23 rushing touchdowns. Like I said, he had that bad injury during his sophomore year, but even going back to his freshman year, he ran for a ridiculous or he had 1,760 total yards, 15 or 16 touchdowns. Now, it, it'll be interesting to see where he goes. This is such a deep draft class when it comes to the running backs. There are like five, six, seven guys that have potential to be starters in the NFL just this year. We saw that last year. We saw a lot of rookie running backs and come in and have a huge impact like Fournette, McCaffrey, and Dalvin Cook, and you know all these different guys, and Joe Mixon and stuff. And this year has arguably just as much talent and probably more depth to it in terms of NFL starters. So Chubb's a guy that's projected probably to go in the top two or three rounds, not uh, not probably in the first day, uh, but it, but his counterpart, Sony Michel, also tested really well. And it should be interesting to see where he ends up because I personally think he's a better prospect in terms of actual running back. I think he has better intangibles in terms of creating yards, in terms of elusiveness, in terms of violent running style, but that balances with balance and vision. I think he's a better all-around guy, like a Kareem Hunt kind of guy. He's 5'11", 215, 45440 65th percentile weight adjusted speed score but it's not all about your 40 yard times you know obviously you can't get hung up on that shit, that stuff uh, he took over the backfield in Georgia when Chubb was hurt you've seen some comparisons from Michelle to Kamara they're about the same size but Michelle runs way more angry for 215 pounds think of him more like an Ingram than a Kamara 
He's still very elusive and he can make great cuts and get through the hole, but he also is very powerful and he will knock the shit out of some D-backs when they come in the hole. So he also has a very good three down skill set. Last year, 1,227 rushing yards on 156 carries. That is 7.9 yards per carry. Number one in the SEC, something that you guys should look at is uh, Graham Barfield. He's a fantasy analyst. Go follow him on Twitter, Graham Barfield, like Graham Cracker and the last name Barfield. He does this, he created this uh, thing called like Yards Created. And it's like a blog column that he does and he, and he analyzes every running back that's come out of college. And basically it's a stat that kind of measures how the running back does without interjecting like the offensive line play, right? Like a lot of guys can, you know, if you have a huge, huge O-line, they open up huge holes for you, you're going to aver average six, seven, eight yards of carry. But when, in the NFL, when you got tight little spaces, right, are you able to create those yards? Are you able to create missed tackles? Sony Michel is one of those guys that rated very highly in Graham's uh, yards created statistic. And the reason, the big takeaway here is, I know it's just a random stat and a lot of people could say they've done this before, but when you look at the history of Graham's column, the last few years he's done it, every time he rates a guy highly, like his top 10 guys that were rated out of college were guys like Kamara or guys like Kareem Hunt that people were like questionable about. But in his ratings, they were really high because they were good running backs on their own. And he was he's one of those like sole guys in fantasy football whose opinion I really respect because his predictions actually play out. So if he says a running back rates really highly in those categories, there's a good chance they're going to translate into a really good NFL player, which is Michel. Sonny Michel out of Georgia. He, I like him more than I like Nick Chubb as a prospect. It all depends on where they land, of course, in terms of fantasy football. Like if, if one of them lands where they're going to be a counterpart, then they're not going to be as valuable if someone lands in a place like, you know, the New York Giants, right? If Sonny Michel goes to the Giants, he could end up being an RB1 this year in fantasy. One guy that rated very, very, very highly. And he's actually my my personal number two running back in this year's draft class behind Saquon Barkley is Darius Geis. So Geis is a running back from LSU who has shared time with Leonard Fournette over the last few years, but he is a very good running back in his own right and dominated when Fournette was in and out of the lineup with his, you know, his ankle injuries and whatever other injuries he dealt with at LSU. Geist was a guy who took over and ran extremely well. And like I said, he rated really highly in Graham Barfield's yards created, missed tackles created uh, statistics, really, really highly among this draft class. His measurables are fantastic as well. 5'10", 225, so he has that build to be a featured back in the NFL. 44940, a 90th percentile weight adjusted speed score. People are comparing him to Marshawn Lynch. And when he was asked, he's like, who do you style your game after? It was Marshawn Lynch. So he's, you know, they both ran around the same exact 40 time. We're in the same percentile for that. Size is around the same. And he moves just like Lynch does. He's very much similar to Sony Michelle in that they both have really good elusiveness, vision, balance, but they're very powerful too. Like they'll run dudes over, they can take it in from the goal line, and they will fight for the extra yards. Geis is, like I said, he's my second favorite guy behind Barkley in this draft class. There's a lot of rumors that Miami loves him. They have pick number 11. Maybe they don't trust Kenyon Drake there. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not really going to get into that. I'm just covering guys that... Uh, that you should know about and you should have on your radar come the NFL draft time. A lot of these guys will flop and a lot of these guys won't end up being NFL starters, but there's always the potential there and you have your eye on them because each year we're seeing more and more rookie running backs make an impact in the league. So Darius Geis, second favorite guy behind Barkley, is just an absolute animal really good measurables and I think if he can if he can find himself in a featured workload, he's going to be a top 12 running back by the end of the year. Next we have a guy Mark Walton from the University of Miami. He's a smaller guy, 5'10", around 200 pounds. A lot of hype around him because he's like a home run hitter guy. His last season this year in Miami and shortly because he had a season ending ankle injury in October that required surgery. He's small, great straight line speed, a lot of comparisons to a guy like James White. Now he ran the ball a lot in Miami, so we've seen him be successful running the ball, but he ended up running a 4'640", which was disappointing in terms of like the home run ability that he showed in college. But again, we can't get hung up on that. A lot of people are like I said, considering him a James White kind of guy. He's met with the Eagles. He's met with the Giants. So there's going to be a place for him somewhere in the backfield. I don't think it's going to be a featured load. I mean, best case scenario is he could wind up a guy like De uh, Deion Lewis, who is incredible. He's like my favorite NFL running back. He's not huge. He's not great size, but he is very good at everything. 
and can contribute hugely to a team like we saw with Deion Lewis with the Patriots last year. But Mark Walton's a guy that I that is projected to probably go between rounds like three, four, five, six in that range. But again, there's a lot of running backs, so you don't know how this thing is going to play out. Next, we have Bo Scarborough, Scarborough out of Alabama, an underwhelming college career in terms of productivity and in terms of just what you thought he was going to do at Alabama. He's one of those like typical beast, big running backs. Uh, but it didn't really work out. He killed the combine. He did really well. And that's not really surprising. It's like one of those guys where you see him in tights and shit and you're like, holy shit. He's like a Latavius Murray kind of guy. 6'1", 228. So just a beast. Built like Adrian Peterson. Ran a 4'5", 240 like Leonard Fournette. So he's in the 90th percentile speed score, but he wasn't 14, 14 reps on the bench press. He didn't have great upper body strength. So his broad jump, I think, was number one in all running backs. And his vertical was really high at 40 inches. His overall spark score was in the 51st percentile. Percentile. So not a great athlete. Uh, he never had a season in Alabama where he ran for more than 815 yards. Obviously, there's always competition there. In 2017, his last year, he ran for less than five yards per carry. It's not something you want to see in a college player, especially someone who's on Alabama who has this recruiting where they have great offensive lines every year, year in, year out. But like I said, he's underwhelming. Teams are going to draft him because they see potential. They see this guy who's huge, fast, whatever. Maybe they could fit him in and maybe he turns out to be a beast. But my opinion, he's not a great running back, and I don't think we're going to see it translate. He'll probably go within the four or five round range. Maybe someone will reach on him just because his combine tested really well. Who else we got? Rashad Penny. Now, this is a guy that a lot of people love. Let me try. I got to put my battery in the charger. Ugh. Okay, we good. So I'm hearing a lot of hype around this guy, Rashad Penny, out of San Diego State. Now, I've watched some of his film. You know what? I, I mean, I want to hear your guys' opinions, first of all, on some of these guys that are coming out and who your favorite running backs are, obviously, besides, like, Saquon Barkley. Like, who's your number two? Who's your two through five? You know, leave comments down below. Also, give a thumbs up if you like the video so far. I know I'm rambling a lot just because I don't have this down packed. I don't, I'm not, like, super familiar with all the prospects yet. Is a guy that a lot of people think can end up as a feature back somewhere in the NFL. 5'11", 220, so good size. 4'4", 640, puts him in the 91st percentile in terms of weight adjusted speed score. Decent vertical, pretty good broad, so good lower body strength. He led the country last year in rushing yards. 2,248 rushing yards. Fifth in the Heisman voting. He's a first-team All-American running back. He's a good size, speed combination. Like I said, good vision, really good quickness. Led the country in broken tackles per PFF. Obviously, at San Diego State, you're going to have lesser competition. Had a good senior bowl, so his draft stock is going up. I'm lower on Rashad Penny than a lot of people are going to be. Just because when I watch him on film, I don't see anything that really stands out to me. Nothing that really says to me he can do it all. He's really not good at pass blocking. He's really not a great pass catcher either. So I don't know. A lot of people are high on him as a runner. I'm going to be less on him. But I've also made that kind of analysis before where I watch someone on tape and I'm like, I don't really see much from the guy. And, and I've been wrong on that. So he's someone definitely to keep an eye on. If he lands in a good spot, he's going to get a lot of hype going for him this, this summer. So led the nation in, in rushing yards last year. Very highly rated in PFF. Measured well at the combine. But for me, it's a tape thing. Next up, we got Kalen Balage out of Arizona State. If I could put this one way, it's Latavius Murray, round two. He is a guy who's built just like Latavius Murray, ripped out of his mind. Really good speed score, 6'1", 225, 4'4", 640. So 96 percentile weight adjusted speed score. But his bench was only 15. His vertical and his broad was kind of low. So his spark score ended up being in the 36 percentile. One of those guys that is very fast, very big, very strong. There's always going to be potential there. When you watch him run though, he has no wiggle. He lacks like vision. He lacks the outside burst to beat guys to the corner. He's a very raw running back prospect right now. He is very good at at catching the ball, which is, you know, Latavius Murray is a guy who can catch the ball as well. He could play on third downs, but he's just not a good runner. And I really don't see Balazs transforming into someone who's a three down back or a featured back in the NFL. I do think someone just because of the raw measurables that this guy has, someone is going to take a chance on him pretty early. So probably rounds three-ish somewhere there. Uh, so Kalen Balazs, you'll see this guy just an absolute animal. We got like three more to go. We got Carrion Johnson out of Auburn. 5'11", 215. So pretty good size for running back. 40-inch vertical, 10-6 broad jump, so good lower leg explosiveness. He did not run the 40-yard dash. He'll wait for his pro day. And a lot of these guys, you know, these numbers will differ in their pro day, right? They're going to they're gonna rerun it in a couple weeks, and some of them might be faster times, you know, because the guns are going to be different, people testing it. So 
that's why I don't get too mixed up in the numbers because you know you could run a four six today in two weeks you might run a four four eight you know you, one little twitch and something is is different in your forty yard dash and and your whole draft stock goes up in flames. He's one of those guys like Arian Foster who has the intangibles right. He's a one cut gliding vision kind of guy and that's what he excels with. He's not going to blow you away with like four three eight speed. He's not going to be the strongest guy on the field. Can move very well with with the ball in his hands, he did not drop a pass in all of 2017. He kind of lacks like lower body power. He's not one of those guys that's gonna run people over. He goes down quick on first contact, but he is a guy that's gaining a lot of hype here. Carry on Johnson, so he's someone that, if given the opportunity, he can succeed in an NFL offense, I think. He's someone that will succeed off the intangibles and just being a good running back like mentally and being able to see holes and being able to hit the holes hard. So carry on Johnson out of Auburn. John Kelly out of Tennessee, another guy, kind of the same build, 5'10", 215, 41-inch vertical, beast. Also chose not to run until his pro day. He is a sleeper favorite among a lot of the draft community in terms of rookie running backs. Great balance after the contact, good wiggle, athleticism, can catch the ball very well. Oh, sorry, battery died. So yeah, he wasn't very productive in college in terms of statistics because he was at Tennessee and he ran behind Alvin Kamara last year. But he finally got that starting role in 2017. He ran for over a thousand yards, nine touchdowns. So he performed well when given the chance. And like I said, he has a lot of those things that you look for in a complete running back, can catch the ball, balance after contact, good wiggle. I wouldn't be surprised if he got drafted in the top three rounds as well. So there's a lot of guys with a lot of potential. It's just a deep class. The last guy I'm going to touch on in this class, and again, there are going to be running backs that I miss probably that some of you guys like more than I do or know about that I don't even really know about because I don't scout and watch tape on every single prospect. But Ronald Jones out of USC, he's another guy who is going to get a lot of hype. 5'11", 205. So on the smaller side, uh, people were really looking forward to seeing his 40 time and seeing his explosion because he's a home run hitter. And that's a knock on him. He can explode through the line. He's almost like uh, Tevin Coleman, where if you give him that crease, he's fucking gone. But people are concerned about his inside running uh, prowess. And does he have the vision, run over guys, things like that, that you need in the NFL kind of to succeed. He ran the 40, but he pulled up short ran a 465 because he, he re-injured a hamstring he had a hamstring injury kind of leading up to the combine for the last few weeks and he thought he could nurse it and then run fine but he ended up re-aggravating it during the 40 so he's hoping he could be good by his pro day to rerun it he needed to really be able to show scouts his where he's going to succeed is on third downs his pass catching ability fortunately he wasn't able to run any routes or catch any balls after the 40 because that's when he injured his hamstring and all that stuff happens after he graded as the number one running back per pro football focus in 2017 so according to pff's ratings he was the number one running back in college football last year the combine was going to be a big make or break for him i'm hoping he can be better for his pro day just as a you know, person a person kind of thing but we're going to need to see more throughout before the nfl draft to kind of know where he's going to go right now i say his stock is at like four to five he is someone that could end up he has a very high ceiling but a very low floor i would say he can end up just being like a third down back that kind of contributes like a geo and we've seen geo run the ball well when given the opportunity ronald jones has ran the ball really well at usc so we've seen him touch the ball in high volumes and be able to produce at that level so he's someone I would say that has a very high ceiling, but a very low floor. And those are my guys. I'm gonna, I probably named about eight to 10. So if I would to take away my favorite guys, obviously Saquon Barkley is number one. He's gonna be a fantasy running back one, no matter where he lands. My second favorite guy is Darius Geis out of LSU. He's a Marshawn Lynch type guy with probably more elusiveness. Then you have the two running backs out of Georgia. You have Nick Chubb, Sony, Michelle, both very productive, very good all-around running backs, tested very well at the Combine. Those are my favorite four guys. There's also Rashad Penny, who people are going to like probably a little bit more than myself. And there's the high upside guys like Mark Walton out of Miami, Ronald Jones out of USC. And then there's those bigger build guys like Kalen Balaj out of Arizona State, Bo Scarborough out of Alabama, who are 6'1", 6'2", 230, built like Adrian Peterson, but in my opinion, not very good running backs. And I think that will probably not translate into the NFL, more like Latavius Murray at his worst. So those are the guys to keep an eye on. You know, obviously there's not much to take away from fantasy until we know where they're going to land because opportunity is key. Opportunity is everything in fantasy. And uh, that's what we have to look forward to. So as soon as the draft wraps up, obviously I'm going to do like a top 10 rookies for next fantasy season. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you go to the Instagram, follow, comment, hashtag BDGE to enter into the belt giveaway. Also, uh, make sure you're following me on Twitter. Make sure you're following the new Fantasy Football Facebook page. Go subscribe to the email list. All that shit is linked below. And if you missed a mock draft video for next year, already, I did a first round mock draft. Go check it. Peace.